I'm Matt Carey, documentary editor at Deadline. We have for you now a just riveting documentary series from Lifetime. It is The Prison Confessions of just Gypsy Rose Blanchard. And we are joined by executive producers Nicole Vogel, Laura Fleury, and Melissa Moore, and by Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Thank you for being with us. This case of Gypsy Rose Blanchard, her mother, Dee Dee Blanchard, has really just gripped the nation for, for many years now. A lot of you have heard about it or seen the series, which uh, comes down to the incredible abuse that Gypsy Rose Blanchard suffered as a child at the hands of her mother. This was a case of Munchausen syndrome by proxy. Uh, before we get into some questions about the series, let's take a look at a clip from it, which really sets the scene. Have a seat. Grab the, the mic. Do you know, you know how to do this? Yes. All right. Let me set that. How are you? Good. Good. How are you feeling today? Nervous. Okay. I'm ready. Remember, my mom said happy endings are not just in fairy tales, they're real. My mother controlled everything I did. I was forced to use a wheelchair. She started telling people that I had cancer. But none of it was true. There was also a lot of emotional and physical abuse. I started to feel like it was either her or me. Didi Blanchard's death was violent. And that's when I hear her calling my name. Gypsy, help me. Her daughter, Gypsy Blanchard, and her boyfriend are now jailed on first-degree murder. I played a part in asking him to commit the murder. That is why I'm in prison. I've had six years to feel those emotions. And there's things that I've kept so private. The reason why I want to talk about it now is because I want to be free of all of these disturbing secrets. From the first time I tried to run away, she chained me to the bed. And before I knew it, I pulled the trigger. She never wanted me to find love or be happy. I'm sorry. <laughs> But I am engaged. Today is the day before my parole hearing, and I will finally share my story the way that it should be shared. Now you can never take my soul. So, Gypsy Rose, we hear at the very end there of your decision to do the series. I guess I'm wondering now, are, are you happy? that you did it, the six part series, which delves so much into your life, what happened to you as a child and um, uh, your life since release. I'm very happy with how the documentary turned out. Um, I did watch it and I was honestly learning revelation through watching it. Um, and I was starting to honestly see myself in a different light. So it was also eye opening to see myself in that kind of, vulnerable space that I was in. Um, I'm happy with the way that it came across. I just feel like this was the way that my story should have been told all along. Um, because I know that my story has been told through different other outlets. And I feel like there was always margin for error. So this one um, definitely really painted the most truest light to what my life was and what my life is. Mm -hmm. Nicole, can you give us a sense of how big a, a hit this has been for Lifetime? It really created a sensation when it aired in January. Yeah, it, it, it clearly we greenlight it, thinking it would be a hit. It definitely surpassed even our wildest uh, expectations, but it was a 
three night event. It was number one uh, on cable for the nights that it aired. It's been our number one most downloaded uh, property ever across all of AE networks. It's been the most uh, highest social performing uh, property and buzz for us across AE networks. So it really has been a hit. And I just think that that's a testament to. Gypsy, her openness, uh, the fact that she has shared her story in different ways throughout her life, uh, but now has evolved into a grown woman who was ready to tell her story, you know, it, it, from a different perspective than she had ever maybe even been able to uh, process or share before. Or Melissa, <clears throat> we see, saw in that clip of course, that you interviewed Gypsy Rose behind bars in Missouri. That's pretty extraordinary itself. How were you able to to secure that kind of access? Because it's quite rare to be able to interview anybody on camera who's uh, in prison. So, so just a little backstory, and then and then and, and Melissa will jump in. We Melissa was the one who who already had a relationship with Gypsy and came to us, and then uh, even before Lifetime came on board, we the studio that's owned by AD Networks um, were able to work with the prison. Melissa had already had uh, visited her in prison previously, and so she already had a good relationship with the prison. And then we, as a production company, then worked with them, um, and they were very, very great to work with. Um, and they allowed us to film with Gypsy even before we had a production deal. So when we were still in, in development and that, that being able to, to get in with Gypsy so, so early in our production window and so, um, so many years still before she was actually going to be released, it, 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 it allowed us to experience Gypsy for the first time with her own agency, but also with still a, a number of years to left to go in prison. And so her perspective on where he, she had come from and where she wanted to go was was really, really special and unique. And obviously that shows um, shows up in the documentary as the spine of, of the program. Of course, we talked to her for many over a, a course of 18 months beyond that. Um, but but as you say, that access is is not easy to get, and was so critical in being able to really um, be with Gypsy where she was at um, emotionally, physically, and otherwise. Melissa and and Gypsy, maybe I could ask you, Gypsy, you referred to the revelations for you, Melissa. What were the revelations that that you see as coming out of this series? Because as as Gypsy said, there was a Hulu, a, you know, sort of adapted series about it there was an hbo documentary but here you're really getting into a, a greater level of depth and that comes with time so gypsy and i have had a friendship for over seven years and this uh confessions of gypsy rose was in basically pre-production i would say over the course of three years gypsy and i did phone recordings every Tuesday every week, I would say, Gypsy. It was, it was yes, very- every Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, mm. Tuesdays with Gypsy, and I stayed on top of her life. I think when I first met Gypsy, I had come um, to ask to see if she would do an interview, and she declined. And <laughs> I came to the prison, and she declined. But we had a fabulous conversation. We started talking about her life as a young woman in prison, and she said something that I'll never forget, which was, I feel more free in prison than I've ever felt my entire life. And I thought, wow, there is something more to her story. This is a woman coming of age in prison. She's learning from other inmates how to be a woman. She didn't get that training from her own mother. And so we we stroke, you know, we stroke up this friendship and we talked weekly and that intimacy that we had, that bond, I think transferred onto film because she trusted me. And one thing I also heard from her is that everybody took her story and she didn't get the platform to tell her story. And so partnering up with Laura Flory, Laura Flory was my executive producer for Monster and My Family years ago for LMN, and I have a trust and relationship with Laura and, of course, with the a &E Network. And so it felt natural to call Laura and, and say, hey, I think there's something really special here. And I'm thankful to Nicole at Lifetime for 
taking the time because a lot of networks won't take that amount of time to to do a documentary. Mm. And Gypsy, what has it meant to you to see so many of your family members in the series also hear from law enforcement? Uh, you know, there's many things I'm sure you just couldn't be aware of um, while being behind bars. You know, it was a very eye-opening experience because I got to see um, and hear from other people's perspectives on what they were going through at the time that, you know, my crime happened and, and I was in prison and how it affected them because being behind stone walls, I didn't get a chance to have a very um, interpersonal connection with all these people. Um, a lot of them, as soon as I got arrested, I was cut off from them. Um, so hearing their perspectives on, you know, their personal experience with, this shared experience that we all went through together and see where they were at with it was very eye-opening for me. Um, and especially it was very interesting to see what some of the doctors had to say as well. Uh, and indeed, you know, your, your pediatrician who didn't have access to these records that would have really been eye-opening for him, all the medical treatment you were subjected to that was completely unnecessary as we see in the series, including a a feeding tube, I mean, and medications, it's just really mind boggling to imagine. Nicole, I think it's a just stunning, Gypsy Rose, as a, she has a star quality, which I think is, is a tremendous asset when you are <laughs> making a piece of entertainment. It occurs to me, like, are you thinking about a follow-up season? Uh, uh, too? Yeah, we have. We have announced and we are in production on uh, a follow-up season. We were with Gypsy from the moment she was released um, from from prison in the, the wee hours of the morning on what, December 28th, I believe it was? Yes. So right, yes. right during the holidays, our crew was there. Um, and we've, we've been following her and making a true follow doc. This is this is not a reality show. This is Gypsy living her life, and we are there documenting it. Um, and yeah, it's 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 been it's been a journey. It'll it'll uh, it'll air in in June, and it is called uh, Gypsy Rose: Life After Lockup. Mm. Oh, okay. You're well underway with that, and Melissa and Laura. Um, there are a lot of uh, recreations, or a fair number of recreations in the series, including, I guess, a young actress uh, playing the young Gypsy Rose, which was almost eerie because whoever you know you found for that looked exactly like the young Gypsy Rose. I'm just wondering about sort of casting that and and making those recreations that allow the viewer to really experience all that she went through. It was a really important part of our process when we were uh, trying to figure out how do we help the audience understand, start, start to peek into the world that Gypsy had to create for herself, living in this, the prison of the life that she lived with her mother. And, and, and because of the things that she shared with us and the way she talked about the importance of sort of her imagination, um, that became an inspiration for us and, and and she is somehow able to remain so positive. So there was this sort of glow to to the way she she would talk about this imagination and, and the way that she would sort of escape. Um, and our our showrunner, Carolyn Day, really had a, a, a great vision for how do we bring this to life? So there was a lot of discussion about how to do this in a way that was evocative, um, uh, but very um, respectful and um, you know, recreations can can be tricky, right? So anyway, the, the, it was, a, I think, a beautiful way of evoking this idea of this world that Gypsy had created for herself, while also being very anchored in the reality of what Gypsy's experiences were. Hmm. And Gypsy, I'm just curious, in the time we have remaining, you know, you went through all those unnecessary treatments, and, you know, how your health is now, because Again, you, you shouldn't have had to have all those procedures and medicines and, and whatnot. Uh, yeah, um, you know, right now I'm as healthy as a horse, as I say. And, you know, it, it's one of those things that, you know, you don't realize, um, or at least I didn't realize that 
the medications had such side effects um, mm. until I was off mm. of them. And now I, I can mm. recollect and I'm like, no, I haven't had an ear infection since I've been away from those medications. So constantly things like that are coming up where I realize that I am healthy and I'm, I'm happy that I'm healthy. <laughs> mm. Well, I know really all of America, if I could be so bold as to speak for America, it feels likewise that you have your freedom and after such an unbelievable ordeal that you've been through. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. The subject of the series, Gypsy Rose Blanchard, it is Lifetime's series, The Prison Confessions of Gypsy Rose Blanchard. We've been joined by Nicole Fogel, executive producer and executive producers, Laura Fleury, and Melissa Moore. Thank you so much for being with us.